One of the biggest demographic shifts in the, you know, in the world over the last few years has been the rise of China's middle class. They're coming from a pretty low base and after 10, 20 years of 10% growth, um, the Chinese middle class are now have uh, consumer power and disposable income that they're willing to spend on uh, fashion items. They've already bought their house, they've got their first car, they've got the TV and now what's next? You know, fashion things and um, nice shoes, nice handbags, nice suits. So this is really one, probably the most powerful consumer demographic in the world right now, whether that's spending on things in China or whether it's Chinese traveling outside and purchasing in Paris or purchasing in Sydney. So this has also helped all the international brands to, um, to, to want to go into China to tap into this and attract Chinese consumers outside China. Now this is also bringing uh, more attention to Chinese designers. Uh, if you look at the fashion industry, all the magazines like Vogue and Cosmopolitan, etc., are now also in China, and some Chinese issues are some of the thickest in the world. Again, to tap into this market, um, which, which has great uh, insatiable demand for all things fashion. I'm the director of luxury retail with Savills Property Services China. Uh, and what does that mean? It means that I work with, I'm in the middle of shopping mall developers and international fashion and luxury brands to help them talk to each other and basically help the brands to open stores in the malls. So essentially it's a, it's a job in a real estate company around retail leasing. But on the outside of that I need to understand what consumers are doing in each city, the GDP and economic data for different cities, the way the fashion industries work, the supply chain of the fashion industry. I need to be a marketer because I have to market the mall, I have to be a salesman because I have to sell them all. So around the role it's, uh, there's lots of dynamics um, and different things I need to you know, use and, and, and in my daily work. Yeah. Chinese fashion may incorporate more elements of Chinese culture or I guess Asian design and, and, and elements that, that could draw from their long history of using silk. But Chinese design could also just be um, a suit or a dress um, that, that is more of an international image and an international standard and, and, and theme. Uh, a Chinese designer doesn't not have to use Chinese elements in their Chinese design um, these days. So I studied Bachelor of Economics, Bachelor of Asian Studies with a major in Chinese and a year in China, which called, actually made the degree a specialist degree. And I chose to do that degree because I'd already spent some time in Thailand because uh, my father was posted there for a year. So I had been exposed to Asia. Actually the first time I graduated high school I didn't know what I wanted to do and didn't even get into uni. But then after I'd spent time in Asia, I suddenly discovered a passion for Asia. And really, I think what the passion was, was living in big, populated, dynamic cities, with, which were exciting. So I came back to uh, Australia and decided, I want to live in Asia. And what's the best way and fastest way to do that? And because I'm from Canberra anyway, it just made perfect sense to do Asian studies at ANU. Now, I also did economics because I also, was also very interested in business. And I wanted to create, um, combine um, the two degrees in, in, in the economic side, wherever I could, I studied the economics of Asia. And on the Asian studies side, wherever I could, I, I studied um, economic history of Asia and things like that. So I was really creating myself a business in Asia degree somehow. Yeah.